to Biostat Squid. In biology, as in other sciences, we are often interested in the distribution of our data. A great way to visualize and summarize the distribution of a continuous numeric variable is through violin plots and box plots. In this video, we're going to learn how to interpret violin plots and box plots. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Imagine we have two samples of mice. We have diabetic mice and our control group. Let's have a look at the weights of our 20 diabetic mice. We can already get a few statistics from our data. We have the minimum value, the maximum value and the median. Other common descriptive statistics are the quartiles. There are three quartiles that basically divide a data set into four parts. The first quartile, Q1, or lower quartile, is the value below which 25% of the data falls. In other words, 25% of the data points, uh, in this case weight, in our data set are less than or equal to Q1. The second quartile is the middle value of the data set when ordered from least to greatest. It divides the data set into two equal parts with 50% of the data falling below Q2 and 50% above it. You probably know it with a different name. This is the median. And the third quartile, Q3 or upper quartile, is the value below which 75% of the data falls. In other words, 75% of data points in our data set are less than or equal to Q3. The interquartile range, IQR, is the difference between the third and the first quartile. It represents the spread of the middle 50% of the data and is often used as a robust measure of variability. It's less sensitive to outliers compared to the range, which goes from minimum to maximum. So if you have a really high value in your data set, in other words, a very heavy mouse, then the range will be really affected because it's taking the minimum and the maximum. But the interquartile range will probably not change very much because it's just taking the variability of the middle 50% of the data. Nice. So let's put all of this into a plot. We have our minimum and our maximum. Let's also mark the median, which divides our data points into equal parts. And we can also mark the lower quartile, or Q1, and the upper quartile, or Q3. And now let's draw a box to make the interquartile range. Woohoo! We have a box plot. Really easy, right? We can flip it over and see it vertically, which is how box plots are often shown. But this is essentially it. So now we can easily get a visual summary of our data. We've kind of already covered it, but let's have a look at the different pieces of information we can get from a box plot. First of all, the median values. These are shown by the line that divides the box into two parts. Half of the scores will be greater than or equal to this value, and half of them will be less. The dispersion of the data set is another important piece of information. Basically, how stretched or squeezed is our distribution. We can observe also the range, and the interquartile range. With a box plot, we can also check for signs of skewness, which basically checks if the data is symmetrical or if most values are concentrated towards either end. When the median is in the middle of the box and the whiskers are about the same on both sides of the box, then the distribution is symmetric. When the median is closer to the bottom of the box and the whisker is shorter on the lower end of the box, then the distribution is positively skewed, so it's skewed right. 
and when the median is closer to the top of the box and if the whiskers are is or the whisker is shorter on the upper end of the box then the distribution is negatively skewed or skewed left Finally, we can also have a look at outliers. Outliers are just observations that are numerically distant from the rest of the data. So sometimes the whiskers of the box plots don't go all the way to the minimum and maximum, but they show 1.5 times the IQR, so the interquartile range. In other words, one and a half times the length of the box. Then the outliers, the values that fall outside this range, are shown as dots outside the whiskers. Nice, so these are the main things you can kind of extract from a box plot. But even better than that, box plots can be used to compare groups. Let's go back to the weights of the diabetic versus control mice. So step one, the first thing we should check is the median, which is a good way to compare both groups. If the median line of the box plot lies outside of the box of the comparison box plot, then there is likely to be a difference between the two groups. The median weight is higher for diabetic mice in this case. Note that to be able to say that it's significantly higher, we would have to use a statistical test. This is just a way to visualize the data. We're not doing any statistical test. So we can also compare the interquartile ranges, so the box lengths, to examine how the data is dispersed between each sample. The longer the box, the more dispersed the data is. The smaller, the less dispersed the data is. So the spread of the data is higher in control mice, as we can see from the size of the box, which is basically the interquartile range. And we can also look at the overall spread, as shown by the extreme values at the end of the two whiskers. This shows the range of scores, which is another type of dispersion. Larger ranges indicate a wider distribution, that is, more scattered data. Nice! We can also look for potential outliers. So when reviewing a box plot, an outlier is usually defined as data points that are located outside the whiskers of the box plot. So we can see a few outliers in the control group. Finally, we can look for signs of skewness if the data does not appear symmetric. In this case, this is not really the case. Nice, as you can see, box plots are great to compare different groups or categories. So we've seen how to visualize the distribution of our data with density plots and with box plots. What if we could combine both? This will give us a violin plot we have our box plot, but then we add a rotated density plot on each side. If you haven't yet, check out my video on how to interpret density plots to get the main concepts when understanding these plots. With a violin plot, not only can we e easily visualize stats like the median and the IQR, but we also get the advantage of seeing the probability density of the data. So we can quickly see if our data is normally distributed or if it has skew or multimodality. Wider sections of the violin plot indicate a higher density of data points, while narrower sections indicate lower density. Easy. In summary, violin plots are particularly useful for comparing the distribution of data across different groups or categories, allowing for easy identification of differences in central tendency, spread, and skewness. Squid-tastic! If you'd like a tutorial on how to create and customize your own violin plots, box plots, and density plots in R, leave me a comment down below, or if you have any questions or feedback, let me know too. Remember that you can vote for topics in buystatsquid.com, so I know what you'd like to see next. Have a great day, and see you in the next one!